Well, with the rookies panel at three of uh, there were six, I guess, uh, Toronto City Councillors who were elected for the first time in last year's uh, October election. Three of them are with me uh, today: Councillor Kristen Carmichael Greb, uh, Ward 16; Councillor John Birdside from Ward 26; and Councillor Stephen Holiday from Ward 3. Last week, big council meeting ran. I don't know what was it, 75 days? I think uh, it was Felt at least three days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some outcomes, I think, pretty much expected by people. A few surprises. One of the surprises, I think, was. Uh, the uh, the vote on some amendments proposed to the Municipal Elections Act, one of them uh, being uh, with regard to ranked ballots. And the outcome of that vote basically uh, kind of turned council's policy around because council in its last term had voted in favor of asking the province to permit the use of ranked ballots at the municipal uh, level. There's been a pretty strong and organized campaign to propose ranked ballots. Uh, council uh, last uh, week, though, uh, voted uh, a majority opposed to that. And uh, I think, I, can't even, I don't even know what the motion was, but basically asked the province not to consider that. But certainly it suggests that this council this year is not in favor of ranked ballots. For those of you who don't know what a ranked ballot is, right now when you go into the polls, you, pick, you put an X basically next to the person that you want, and whoever has the most Xs at the end of the night is the winner, even if they don't have a majority of all of the Xs, because there might be 10 candidates, they might each get uh, you know, just under 10%. If one gets just over 10%, that's the winner, even with 10% support. Under the ranked ballot system, you wouldn't put an X, you'd put a 1 against your first choice, a 2 against your second choice, a 3 against your third choice. Council uses this process to pick, uh, to appoint temporary councillors, uh, uses it for uh, committee appointments. Uh, all of the political parties use the same process to pick their leaders uh, so that uh, the people who have the least support drop off and their votes are redistributed to the second choice, etc., until somebody in theory has more than uh, 50%. Why do you think councils? Uh, approach to this change, John? Is it is something fundamentally changed or is it just a new group of people with new opinions? Well, well, there's that, but I, I was uh, I noted in a newspaper article there were, I think, about eight or nine councillors who changed their opinion, and so I can't comment on why they did that. For me, it was, it was um, really a matter of, you've had to explain it here on air, and you've done a good job, but it is a little more complicated, well, it's a lot more complicated than just putting one X down, so there's the complicate, uh, complication factor, and uh, you know a lot of times when I was knocking on doors, people didn't know if I was federal, provincial. They didn't even know the difference. And then more importantly, or just as importantly, um, if if this is the way to go, the province needs to do it first. And and then you know we're a creation of the province, and then they can just uh, mandate it for us. There's going to need to be an education campaign. So just Toronto doing it on its own it wasn't something that uh, I could support. So you think voters are not ready for it, and it's too complicated for them? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I really do. I mean, there are a lot of people that obviously are passionate about it, but I think given that it's city politics, there are a lot of people that uh, are, there's a lot of apathy out there. And um, I say, I think we need the province to to take the lead and then uh, we can uh, we can go along with it. From Stephen, there. you're nodding. You also voted against it. Is that the same reason? Well, uh, to be clear, I voted for the, the new uh, resolution, which quashed it. Okay. And I think those councillors made the right choice. I've never been from day one a uh, proponent of this system. Council's a very diverse place. You've got people on the so-called left, some people on the so-called right, some people in the middle, and it fuels some pretty interesting debates. My fear with rank balloting is that, you know, the second and third choice of people will naturally be that kind of center, center-left candidate that's very neutral, very unexciting. So over time, the diversity of council will become flat. And I don't think that bodes well for good public policy. You've got to get us into that crucible and have us fight out the public policy so that you've got a product at the end of the day. And, and having a very boring group of people is not going to be very healthy for the city in the long run. One of the advantages that uh, advocates of ranked ballots put forward is that it would, in theory, they argue, make it easier to get rid of incumbents. Because we did have in the last election a number of uh, long stand, long serving councillors who probably wouldn't have won under uh, a ranked ballot system because there were two or three other choices that probably on their own would have been more popular but perhaps split the vote. Is that something that you considered, Kristen? Um, I, I, I've i never been a, a fan of ranked ballots, and, and really why I uh, voted for, for uh, Councillor DiCiano's resolution was uh, was because of that. I, I, don't, I don't see that it will really make a difference. People look at me and say, well, you only won with 17% of the votes. So with ranked ballot, we could have had someone else, but I, I don't believe that. I worked for over a year very hard to... Uh, 
to uh, make sure that that I was elected. And um, and when you have 16 people on the ballot, it's very confusing for voters who to pick for number one, let alone number two or three.